Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to do a bit of scroll saw work. Basically, just cut out this lizard, and then we'll do with the Dremel and sanding burrs and engravers, literally just to shape it the best we can. So obviously we've had that on there, we've drawn around it with our pencil, and that's it. Our little template is made. So now I'm going to do now is. I'll drill one hole in here, a pilot hole, just to feed our blade through because we have that middle section to cut out. And then we'll cut the outer line all out with our Pegasus 5 spiral blade. Small projects like this, you could use a standard square uh, straight blade, no problem whatsoever. I just prefer a spiral blade because it will cut in any direction. And it's just something I'm just playing with at this moment in time. So we'll set this up on this grow saw. I literally just cut this out first and then we have a lot of shaping to do like I said with the Dremel drums and engraving bits let's cut it out first okay you can see from that we've drilled our pilot hole we've fed our blade through we've got it onto the adapter clamps that I have to use most of your modern swords they're just little clamps at the top and you do away without the clamp got nice tension on get that nice ping ping sound Remember the blade's in the right direction, you want it smooth on the way down and you want it rough on the way up. Any inner line work like this, always remove that first, it just gives you a bit more wood to work with. If you have to cut around this outer edge first and remove all the backing, you just go only little smaller bits to hold on to. So always cut your inner bits first. So we'll cut this out now and then we can start shaping it off with our Dremel bits. Okay, you can see from that we've cut round it nicely. No problems with that whatsoever. The spiral blades are nice. They do take some getting used to and they're not for everybody. The good thing about spiral blades is no turning of the wood. I mean, they weren't needed on this small little project. But on bigger projects, you literally could just cut it like that. Start off with your blade there and just go from left to right and then bring it down. Go all the way around there and that would cut it like that. Whereas if it's a straight blade, you'll be coming in here and then you'll have to turn it, go down there and then turn it again, go down there and turn it and so on and so on. And there's a lot of this and a lot of that. You can do it if you take your time. I just prefer the spiral blades. Just a preference thing. Anyway, okay, it's cut out nicely. Just fencing wood, remember. So we don't have a lot of thickness to go, go on. But we have enough to give it some kind of shaping. Now the bits I'm going to use are these engraving bits. You can eBay, Amazon, Dremel engraving bits. I never buy original Dremel parts, they're just too expensive. These are just your Made in China specials. And there's all sorts on there. They come in all different shapes and stuff. And that's plenty for a couple of pounds. You can't go wrong with that. 
So we all use that to shape off with, get a rough idea what we want. And then of course, the good old sanding burrs. Same again, not original Dremel sanding burrs. You don't need those. And they come in different sizes and different shapes. I'm going to say shapes here, but they're all round, obviously. Different sizes there, big ones. And then you get smaller ones, like so. And when you put these on at the end, and that, I will actually do more shaping with the sanding burrs than I will with these. Okay, let's start giving this some kind of shape. Okay then, there we have it. We've used our engraving bits just to get us going with, but to be honest, most of this was done with the sanding drums on a Dremel. Only cheap fencing wood, but it does sand really nice, and we've got some kind of shape going. Now, I've never claimed to be a master carver, so what you see is what you get. But we gave it a go, that's the main thing. We've had a play about. And it's, it's okay, it'll do. I'll put it on the side of my shed. I certainly have no issues with it. If you remember our original template that we drawn around, which was that one there, we don't want it identical. We're not doing copies here, daft as it sounds. But we're not, we're not far off. This has got himself a friend, hasn't he? So there we have him. That'll do for us. So... That one go back in its own place in the garden. And this one can go on the shed. Painting wise, just painters touch for these ones because it is going outside. I'll get some random colours. I have no idea what colour we're painting this one yet. And then we'll spray on some protection. Now crystal clear as always on all my projects. And then we'll get this one in its uh, little place on the shed. Right, that's it. This little project is finished. We gave him two or three coats of our crystal clear spray. Just give it a nice shine and a little bit more protection with it going outside. Now the paint job's not going to win any awards. And neither is the carving, to be honest. But they're just fun little projects. The main thing is, we gave it a go. This was just a piece of scrap fencing wood. They would end up in the bin somewhere. And now he's got another chance to shine a bit. Okay, so we have one lizard. Now this will go on the front of my shed with the rest of the projects. So there we have it. Four inches by six inches on rough fencing wood. A little lizard, scroll saw and Dremel carving. Thank you very much for watching.